my old world order finally arrived and I think I'm the last person on YouTube to get their hands on it. So settle in as today I take you through what I got and my thoughts and feelings on the old world post launch. Welcome back to Envelope 2 Miniatures. My name is Dietz and yes, I finally have my old world order. It took over a month, but it is finally here. It actually did arrive last week, but I wanted to paint up one of the miniatures for you guys, which you can see later on in the video. Now, if you're in Australia, just like me, you're probably sitting there with a lot of jealousy going on, watching all these people around the world, open up their minis, paint with them and play with them, have a lot of fun with them while we were just waiting. I know a lot of people weren't even able to get these miniatures due to stock issues, so we really didn't have it that bad. We just had to wait a little bit longer. Being solely a Warhammer Fantasy channel, I really wanted to ride that sweet, sweet old world hype train, but not everything works out. I bet you're thinking to yourself, he probably just got a Bretonian or a Tomb King box and you would be wrong because those boxes really didn't do it for me and the Australian price point was really high for these guys. When I pick my minis that I wanna buy, I generally go with the rule of cool. And over the past year, I really have become a painter first and then probably a lore guy and then the kind of the game side of things. So when they released the new Bretonian models, the new Tomb King models, I kind of pick and choose which ones I wanted to paint. Now as cool as the Bretonian and the Tomb King boxes were, there was nothing in them that really stood out to me that I really wanted out of these boxes. The Pegasus Knight was a little bit too big for me and it felt looked a little bit awkward, looked a bit Age of Sigmarie, a bit bland. Now everyone has different tastes and opinions and if you like it, that's awesome. I'm really happy for you, but it wasn't really for me. And it was the same with the Bone Dragon uh, in the Tomb Kings box. You know, if I did have these, I definitely would paint them, but they weren't things that I was really looking for. But there were a couple things that GW did release that I wanted to get my hands on really, really bad. So let's get into it. We'll start off with the Tomb Kings first, and there's two minis that really stood out to me that I really, really wanted. And obviously the first one was going to be Cetra because it's Cetra. Now I love character minis out of every single army. I think I'm really like a hero hammer guy. I love painting the heroes more than I do the units, even though I do paint the units for you guys. But I've always been after the Cetra model. I've never really found one on eBay or Marketplace. So when GW announced that it was going to be re-released, I obviously had to jump on it and get my hands on this guy. Now this guy's got a fair few pieces. He came in metal, which is awesome. I love metal minis. I know a lot of people out there don't, but metal for me is just the best because it lasts forever. He also will probably require some pinning and stuff like that and a lot of cleaning up, I'm guessing but I'm really excited to finally paint Cetra. And look at the size of this base. This base is absolutely huge. So it's gonna be fun to kind of do some sand on there and give it a bit of a desert theme. Now, the second miniature I got from the Tomb Kings was this new Tomb King, which is a brand new sculpt and a brand new model from GW. And the reason I wanted to get this miniature is just kind of see what this new sculpt was like. I wanted to see if the resin was any better. And I can tell you right now that the resin actually isn't that bad. I actually painted a Tomb King over a year ago now that was kind of like Swiss cheese. It has that many bloody holes in that miniature that it was an absolute disaster. It was just an old fine cast mini. But this guy here, as you can see, is actually pretty good. A lot of detail is there. There's no holes or anything missing. And the mold on this mini looks really good too. So I'm really looking forward to getting some paint on this guy eventually. And now moving on, there were also two miniatures I got from the Bretonian range and one that I've been after for so bloody long. It's been absolutely crazy. I always look out for this guy on eBay and I never ever find him. And that is the Grail Relic. Now this miniature is pretty hard to come by and when they do pop up, they sell for pretty crazy prices. So just to get my hands on a brand new one, was an absolute must and I eventually will be painting this guy from the channel. I did get a few messages from a few people telling me that they got their hands on this one as well and it needs a lot of cleaning up and looking at the miniature now I can also see that it will need a little bit here and there. This miniature comes with a few pretty cool pilgrim monk looking guys and it's got a lot of detail. It's gonna look so cool as a centerpiece miniature on that table. Now this guy was a little bit pricey. It was 110 Australian dollars, but I'm just happy to get my hands on it so I really can't complain. Now the second miniature I got from the Bretonians was this Questing Knight Paladin with great weapon. And I'm actually gonna paint this guy for you now. Now just like the Tomb King, this guy did come in resin as well, but I was really surprised when opening up because the sculpt is near perfect. There was hardly any mold lines. All I had to do was just trim away these little bits, give it a little bit of a scrape here and there, but it was actually pretty damn good for resin. Now I keep hearing everyone screaming, it's resin, don't buy it. But this is kind of the reason why I wanted to buy it to see if GW's resin has gotten any better. And I can actually tell you it has, it's gotten much better. So I wouldn't be scared of buying these miniatures at all. This Paladin also came with two head options, one with the helmet and one with the little bald head. And I decided to opt in to paint the bald head because why not? I need to practice for Olden Demon anyway, which is coming up. So I slapped some paint on that and it was actually really fun to paint. Now this kit also does come in a fair few bits and is a little bit complicated to paint, so I did opt in for painting it separately. 
So one other good thing about this kit is that it kind of comes with the little supports and they act as really good little stands. Now I know this wasn't intentional, but you can just stick some blue tack down and stick the guy on and it makes life a whole lot easier when painting it because you can paint it separately. Bretonians really aren't my first or favorite faction. I know, don't hate me. This guy here actually really did turn me into liking these miniatures a whole lot more and really enjoying painting Bretonians and really liking the army. Plus the severed orc head with the sword in it is actually pretty cool too. It does require a little bit of green stuff around the eye, but I'm sure you guys can manage that one as well. It did take me a while to paint this guy pretty much all week, but anyway, stick around to the end of the video to see that grand reveal. And moving on to the last piece I got out of my old world order, and that is the rule book. Now, as I said before, I haven't played really any games recently. I did play a game of War Master. That's probably the most recent game I played. Uh, I did play a bit when I was younger, but I'm slowly getting back into the hobby and I'm really excited to play my first game of the old world very, very soon when I paint my armies. And I'm guessing my first game will be against my missus when I finish painting some Skaven for her. Now, I did buy this book for obviously the rules, but also for a bit of the lore as well. I really wanted to see where the whole setting was, kind of what's going on in the world of the old world, and to try to get up to date with all that type of stuff. Now there are a couple other books which I probably should have bought with this as well, and I think that was like the forces of good and the forces of bad, or the hordes, or whatever they are, but I'll get those at a later date because the price I paid for all this was well over 600 Australian dollars, which is very, very pricey. Now going through the book, there's lots of great illustrations, new and old, which is great to see. And that was one thing I loved when I was younger is going through these books and rule books and codexes and army books and whatever, and kind of getting a feel for each army and getting a feel for the world. So I feel like GW has done a really, really good job. It's actually a really well put together book as well. Um, I dabble in a bit of design and I know making books and, and magazines and stuff is really, really difficult to get right and get a real balance and, and even to kind of world build and they've done a really, really amazing job with this. So 10 out of 10 for that. And at the start of the rule book as well, as I said, there's lots of history, there's lots of setup. Now, Bretonians and Tomb Kings kind of do take front and center straight away, which is great to see. Obviously, they're the launch armies. And one thing that really did catch my eye when I was going through this book was I did see a page on Kislev and also a page on Cathay, which are obviously now playable in the Total War games, but maybe this is a hint to what's to come. Maybe we will be getting a Kislev army and maybe we will be getting that Grand Cathay army kind of as DLC later on the, down the track. We can only hope. Also towards the back of the book, they've got every army and it's really good to kind of go through each one, look at the cool paint jobs and kind of see which miniatures might be coming from which range. But anyway, my dudes, I'm really excited for the future of the Old World game. And I know you've been patiently waiting to see this Bretonian Paladin. So here it is. Here is one new Old World Bretonian Paladin. Thanks so much for sticking around, my dudes, and listen to me babble on about the old world. Thanks so much to my Patreons for all their support. I really do appreciate it. And don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Cheers.